Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, November 14th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, how the TSA is wasting their breath and a billion of your tax dollars. Then, NSA snoops take down a U.S. computer business. And Mancal's bombshell revelation about Obama. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. You know what it's like to go to sleep every night knowing you work for a bunch of psychotic killers and you bastards are probably going to end up killing me one day? You know what it's like knowing you've ruined my life? You know what it's like? Well, in our top story tonight, we learned that the TSA has spent a billion dollars on a program that doesn't do anything. What a surprise. Yes, according to the GAO, the Screening of Passengers by Observation Techniques, check out that acronym, it's SPOT. Now, that's worth at least a million dollars right there. But that program, the SPOT program, is no better than chance. And they've spent $900 million on it in the last six years. But that's, I guess, that makes the uh, naked body scanners not look like such a bad deal. I mean, we wasted a billion dollars on them, and at least we got some hardware for that. I mean, this is just money that's going out to psychiatrists for a program that has absolutely no effect. Neither do any of their other programs, the screening, the invasive pat-downs, and yet there's been no incidents. But of course, the TSA knows that. We've reported multiple times about the lawsuit that John Corbett brought against the TSA, and in that, the government accidentally posted the unredacted version that had references to their own documents where they said that there are no terrorist threats against airplanes or airports, that the terrorists are just engaged in fundraising, recruitment, and propagandizing. Well, that's exactly what the TSA is doing propagandizing, fundraising, and recruiting. It's just a big bureaucracy wasting your money, harassing you, and putting their hands on you to train you like slaves. And whether it's a TSA or another government agency, the one thing they want is to get information on their slaves. That's you. We learned from McClatchy that Americans' personal data is being shared with the CIA, the IRS, and others in a security probe. They report that U.S. agencies collected and shared the personal information of thousands of Americans in an attempt to root out untrustworthy federal workers. This ended up scrutinizing people who had no direct ties to the U.S. government and simply had purchased certain books. Well, this kind of makes the government look like conspiracy theorists, doesn't it? And yet that's the way they operate with the FISA program. Anybody that knows someone, anyone who they think might be doing something suspicious they follow them, which means that they follow everybody. That's how we get these dragnet searches. And as we learned earlier this week, an exclusive story from InfoWars, it's not just on the internet. It's not just on your cell phones. It's also when you're talking in public, when you're walking in public. They have voice recording. They have facial recording, facial recognition, voice recognition. They're looking at everything you do when you're in public. So it's a total pervasive surveillance state. It's an infrastructure of tyranny that we see being constructed right now, and we know how this is going to go if we don't roll this back. Now, even though the government thumbs its nose at public opinion and the law, we see that in the marketplace, it is having some consequences for companies that play along with this intrusive, illegal activity by the government. Kurt Nemo reports in InfoWars that the NSA snooping is taking down the profits of a U.S. computer networking business. In October, it was reported that the NSA had a backdoor into some Cisco products. And on Thursday, Cisco released their unexpected 10% sales drop of the current quarter. And they said it's not only the only factor, but Cisco says a backlash over U.S. surveillance has definitely hit orders in China. And orders in other developing countries have also plummeted. And again, the NSA is be being cited as a possible factor. That's from David Meyer writing for Gigacom. And it could it be that even teenage consumers are starting to understand the need for privacy and that there's a backlash on that. It's been reported many times that teenagers are starting to leave Facebook in massive quantities. Why? Because their information is there to get them in trouble with the school, with their parents, even with other teenagers. And so they're increasingly going to another service, Snapchat. Facebook reportedly offered $3 billion to buy Snapchat. Now, that's amazing considering that Snapchat has zero dollars of revenue. But its popularity is soaring amongst teens, and 
perhaps they're looking at the privacy that Snapchat offers. Once your messages or your photos go up, they only last for a few seconds and then they disappear, unlike the Utah Data Center. So we'll see what happens with that. But it's the marketplace and entrepreneurs are realizing that there is a market out there for privacy. People are very upset about what the NSA is doing, and if the government is not going to rein itself in and start acting within the law, people are going to protect themselves. That's why you see the rise of things like dark mail and dark wallet and Bitcoin. All these different things are coming up to allow people to get out from underneath this surveillance state that's developed. Now, the government has talked about the disappointment in the number of people that have signed up for Obamacare. Obama had a special event today where he talked about what he's going to do about it. But as we look at these figures, the figures that were released yesterday, that 100,000 people have signed up, personally, I don't find that credible at all. Nancy Pelosi has already inflated that by a factor of five and said it's a half a million. We know from Marketplace.org that the goal of the Obama administration was to have about a half a million people sign up into their program, and yet they're saying their official number, the number that they're going to stick with at the moment, is 100,000. I think it's far less than that. We're seeing dozens of people sign up state by state, and yet we know that millions of people have lost their insurance. But, you know, like Stalin said to paraphrase Joseph Stalin, if a million people lose their insurance, it's just a statistic. But if one person loses their insurance, it's a tragedy. It certainly is for this lady who's suffering from cancer in Orlando. Here's that report. Gloria Cancer has cancer just about everywhere. As well as five brain tumors. I... <laughs> She's made significant progress while at MD Anderson, but now her lifeline, her treatment there, could be cut off. If this letter make more problems for us than we don't need in this moment. This letter says due to the Affordable Care Act, her current plan will end next summer. We were thrown under the bus. A real tragedy, but as her husband pointed out elsewhere in that interview, they're being required to buy a plan that covers things like pediatric care, even though they have no children, or maternity, even though this lady is dying from cancer, and of course, drug abuse programs. All of these things are why people's insurance rates are doubling, even sometimes going up as much as a factor of five. It's becoming as much as a house payment. So of course, people are not going to be buying new houses, they're not going to be buying new cars, because they're going to be buying insurance from an insurance company that they don't need. People who don't have children are going to be forced to buy pediatric care and so forth. So that's pure profit for the insurance companies, never going to have to pay off on those claims. And yet Obama is telling us that he's going to ease up a little bit on his mandates. The dictator in chief is going to graciously give us one more year before he starts canceling plans, he said today. But look at the details here from the Wall Street Journal. What actually came out, what he said was insurers can offer customers the option to renew their 2013 health care plans in 2014, allowing these individuals to keep their plan. Do you understand what's going, in, going on here? Insurers wouldn't be able to sell so-called substandard plans, but they would be allowed to let people extend their plans, not required to, mind you. This is all, again, at the discretion of the insurance companies because this was written to inflate insurance companies' profits. So. This isn't, they're going to allow the insurance companies to decide whether or not they want to keep somebody who's dying of cancer on their current plan, or would they like to double or quintuple their insurance rates? What do you think they're going to do? Why do we allow Obama to dictate to us what insurance plans we can buy, what kind of coverage we have to get? Who is this guy anyway? Man, Cal, thank you so much for coming on with us today. And, and, and repeat what you said on your radio show, uh, to me, about Harry Lennox. He said that Obama shadowed him, that he couldn't shake him. It was kind of like a booger on your finger, uh, is kind of the feeling I got, that he couldn't shake him, and that there's nothing there, and that's the point I wanted to make about abused children, that, that you know, in order to protect themselves, they want to make everybody happy. So as I sat talking to Obama, you know, he was Christian with me, he was Muslim with the next person that came over and talked to him, and uh, he, he's whatever you want him to be, but there's nothing there. And that's basically what Lennox was saying. There's nothing there. He's, he's, a, he's just a, he's an empty vessel. He's whatever you want him to be. And uh, perfect to be manipulated, a perfect puppet. And he says, man, Cal, do I remind you of him? And I said, well, I, I don't want to say anything. He goes, oh, yeah, because all black people are the same. And he's laughing some more. 
He goes, man, Cal, Barack Obama is me. He goes, you've seen me on TV. You've seen me in movies. He is me. And I said, what, what are you talking about? What, what are you saying? He goes, do I remind you of Obama? And I said, well, yeah, you do. He goes, he mimicked me. He followed me for years. And they wanted me to train him and teach him how to act. This is Harry Lennox's words. Lennox uh, is a brilliant actor. Uh, I, I, and, and if you watch him, that's what Obama's supposed to act like. Well, that was an amazing segment today on the Alex Jones Show. Man Cow confirming what many of us have been saying about Obama all along, that basically he is an empty suit puppet, a kind of Manchurian candidate that's been selected by his CIA family to essentially destroy the American economy. And he's doing it by destroying your choices about health care, among other things. But it's not just the insurance companies that are getting wealthy off of Americans. There's a massive transfer of wealth, of course, to the banks as well. Now, in an amazing PR blunder that was uh, caught by Kit Daniels, J.P. Morgan Chase begs for mercy while not giving us any. They decided that it would be a good idea to have a question and answer program for their vice president, and they put this out on Twitter, give us your questions, and people were coming back with things like this. Any plans to return illegally foreclosed homes to their rightful owners? If not, how do you justify your continued existence? Or do you have an org chart that's perfectly analogous to the criminal underworld? You know, capo, made man, or do you just wing it? Uh, does it feel any better paying the biggest bank fines in history so far, or did satisfaction of the crimes outweigh the fines? And as the article points out, earlier this year, the U.S. Attorney's Office opened criminal and civil investigations for fraud against J.P. Morgan for overstating their assets prior to the 2008 crisis. And that's still going on today. They have $1.95 trillion in assets, although they have $71 trillion in derivatives. As the article points out, that's 36 times what J.P. Morgan Chase owns, and this exposure is more than enough to crash the American economy. It's worse than the situation before the 2008 financial crisis. Well, it was back in August this year that we reported on the death of Dr. Bob Bowman. Now, yesterday, he was buried in Arlington Cemetery in a memorial service. Dr. Bowman was a 9-11 Truth Scholar. He was also a veteran whose career had spanned nearly five decades, including his service as a former director of Advanced Space Programs Development, also known as Star Wars. Now, in that, he was amazed that the government was using it not for the defensive purposes that they were talking about, but for purely offensive purposes. He was a man of peace. He was a man of intellectual honesty. He said about 9-11, the most unbelievable of all of the wild conspiracy theories is the one our government has told us. He was a member of Scholars for 9-11 Truth and very outspoken critic of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he also told people to question the government's narrative about what happened with NORAD. He was very focused on that being glossed over in the 9-11 reports. Here's some of that ceremony. I'll now begin to ring the bell 11 times, and I ask that you all think and reflect on Dr. Bowman's work for peace and what we might be able to do to honor that and continue his work. Thank you. Stay tuned. Right after the break, we're going to talk to James Babb. He's got a guerrilla marketing campaign going on in Washington, D.C., in the heart of the beast, telling jurors what juries are really about. So stay tuned.
My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. And the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Our guest today is James Babb, an activist who set up billboards right in the belly of the beast. He put up information about fully informed juries, and he put the billboards up right at the Washington federal court exits out of the subway. It's gotten a lot of attention in the media, as well as the court system, prosecutors in the court system. So we're going to talk to him about how he did that and what his plans are for the future and about jury nullification. James Babb, welcome. Great to be with you. Now, tell us a little bit about this campaign. It got some local news media attention. It also got the attention of the prosecutors there in Washington, didn't it? Yeah, it certainly did. Uh, this is the beginning of a nationwide advertising campaign to inform the public about their rights if they're ever selected for jury duty. So the first billboards have appeared in Washington, D.C., and they've certainly started to make a few waves. Uh, the headline basically just says, jury duty, know your rights. And we encourage people to Google jury nullification so they can learn more. I love what you did. It's kind of guerrilla marketing. You put it right there at the subway exit where people are getting off to go into the court system in Washington, D.C., right? The judiciary exit. Yeah, that's correct. There's two stations in D.C. Uh, where we have some, some really nice ads placed. Uh, the, the funding for these was crowdsourced thanks to some, you know, these great tools we have right now in our social networking. Uh, I, I put that out a few weeks ago and said, hey, you know, is this something our community would be interested in? Folks jumped on board and immediately said, you know, we're definitely behind that. I, I want to get involved. So we started out with a campaign to just have get one ad up to start it. But that within a week, we had enough for three ads. And we're now raising funds for additional campaigns in other cities. That's great. You know, you're using the latest, uh, greatest tools that we've got now. 
I covered Julian Heichlin when he was going out and doing it the old-fashioned way. Here's an 80-year-old retired chemistry professor, and he's handing out pamphlets in front of courthouses and getting harassed, getting abused, getting arrested by the police there. But he did use YouTube to get the information out, or else that would have been a very, very much a one-man campaign against the machine. But you're using crowdsourcing, you're getting these uh, billboards out, and it's interesting to see how local media covered it. You did get local media coverage, which was good, because that's free publicity about jury nullification. But I thought it was interesting that they focused on murder trials, and they had prosecutors saying that they had asked jurors if they had seen these billboards, and if they did, they were dismissed from these murder trials. That's not what informing juries is about. We're not trying to nullify laws against murder, are we? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, we're talking about victimless crimes, and our, our justice system is polluted with victimless crimes. I mean, right now we've got uh, basically one out of 100 adults in the United States is in a government cage. That's right. And if you're, if you're a black man, that number is one in 15. If you're a black man in your 30s, that number is one in 10. And the majority of these people are in cages due to victimless crimes like the drug war, but it's also going beyond that. We've got people on trial for selling raw milk, for yes. putting a garden in their front yard, for collecting their own rainwater. As our system becomes more and more corrupt, the role of the juror becomes more important because the role Absolutely. of the juror has that power to, to intervene. We covered a case where a guy released four balloons to his wife saying that he loved her on a beach, and he was arrested and charged with four counts of a felony for releasing a balloon. Uh, making a releasing a balloon on the beach a felony. That's why we need the jury system. That's why the founders put it there to dispense justice. And that means that we nullify laws that are not good as a juror. And that's something that you can do. You don't have to convince your fellow jurors. It's very important when you get into a jury situation, isn't it, that you don't start talking about jury nullification. Or, or you can, you know, it's, it's up to the individual to decide how they approach it. But mm -hmm. There's, they don't have to explain why they're saying not guilty. Precisely. Um, I, I and if you talk about it, a lot of times they'll dismiss you. If you start talking about it, a lot of times a judge will dismiss you and put in an alternate juror. So remember that when you go into a trial situation, if you're selected as a juror, it has to be a unanimous jury finding to convict somebody of something. One person can let that... Uh, person who's being accused of, of violating an unjust law, or a law that is has, let's say maybe you agree with the law, but maybe the penalties on it are so draconian that you don't want to convict somebody of it. Right, or it's just misapplied. Like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we don't want people polluting the beaches and oceans, but releasing balloons is, you know, is obviously not a, a felonious crime. Yeah, and uh, that quantity, certainly, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, these, these are situations where that can, can play a key role. You know, the ultimate goal is to get these laws removed from the books. Um, we, for instance, the Fugitive Slave Act uh, was nullified by jurors who refused to convict people for harboring fugitive slaves. They knew those laws were wrong. Uh, in, in the 20th century, alcohol prohibition was mm -hmm. brought down by jurors refusing to convict people for alcohol-related crimes. And so today, jury nullification is front and center on this insane war on drugs. It's one of the cornerstones of our entire government and legal system is trial by jury. We see very few people even taking advantage of that now because they're so concerned that juries have become a rubber stamp. So we've kind of gotten into a catch-22 situation. People are afraid that jurors are just going to do whatever the judge tells them and that they're not actually going to get a reasonable consideration of what's before them. And so a lot of people will just go in and plea bargain. I think it's one of the reasons why we have so many people in jail. We've got, you mentioned that earlier, we have more people in jail than are in China and Russia. And that's not as a percentage, that's in total number we have more people. As a percentage, it's much, much higher. China has far more people than we do, and yet we have more people in prison than China has. It's insane. I, I call it the, the culture of incarceration. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just a, 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 a sickening make-work program for useless people, whether it's lawyers or prison guards or judges or probation officers or the, this entire industry revolves around putting innocent people in cages. It's disgusting. And the nice thing about jury nullification, it's one of our final things that, that individuals can do 
to, to put even the slightest monkey wrench in this con conveyor belt that takes you know, peaceful people and just railroads them right into a cage. Absolutely. It's, it's one thing that you can do because our political system is so corrupted, especially at the top. You look at the elections, they get to choose who the candidates are, essentially, who gets to go in the debates, who gets to be on the ballot. They get to count the votes. So that's a pretty corrupt system. But with juries, you can actually do justice to your fellow man. And so it's not only just a right that you have, but it's a duty that you have. And it's something that's in state after state's constitution. Well, I had a uh, interview with the New Jersey weed man who was uh, convicted of having a lot of uh, marijuana and he pleaded, he, he uh, defended himself pro se and he used jury nullification the first time through the judge shut him down and threatened him with contempt and he got seven of the people to vote for him as being innocent they came after him again the second time he had a judge that was a little bit more friendly and actually allowed him to show the new jersey constitution that said that jurors have a right to judge not only the facts of the case but the law and its application and when he had that up in front of the jury they let him go 12 to nothing yeah that's a great case um i, I was there passing out Fiji pamphlets at his trials, and uh, was oh. proud to, to to stand with him. Um, you know, that's that's the ironic thing. The judge didn't want him to mention jury nullification, but he was allowed to actually present a fragment of the state constitution on a board and have it sit next to him in the courtroom, but but not allowed to say the words. Just uh, amazing, isn't it? That that they would put that kind of gag on our people, not even let you see what the constitution is, what the law is. They really want to control the process from the top to the bottom, and we have to get that back. What you're doing is a really great way to handle that. I really salute you for doing that. Where does it go from here real quickly and tell us uh, what your next plans are? Well, um, I'd like to get more people involved. We have a website. It's called juryrightsproject.com and you can get more details about the campaign and there's fundraising to, for the additional campaigns and to keep DC going. Uh, plus, if you want to get something started in your own town, my contact information is in there. Send me an email. We can do this anywhere, and we can we can get some grumpy prosecutors anywhere in this country. <laughs> That's right. Great job, James. I really appreciate that. James Babb, and also you can get information at FIJA.org if you want to know what jury nullification is all about. But that's a great education process that you got going there. Hope that really takes off. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, that's a very important way to check government power. It's one of the few ways it's still effective for us to utilize. Another way that's effective is state nullification of federal laws. And we have a documentary about that very subject at InfoWarsStore.com. It's nullification, the rightful remedy. You can educate yourself about state nullification of laws. Jury nullification is very important. You can do that yourself. If you get onto a jury, it just takes one person to let somebody go from an unjust law or something that is being unreasonably applied. It's your duty and your right to see that justice is done. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com show.